Now, for a deeper look at this issue, we're joined now by Dr. Rithika Goel. She is a family doctor and lecturer at the University of Toronto. And in response to this controversy, now, you wrote a thread on Twitter that has gone viral. And you wrote that you weren't surprised by the photos. Tell me a little bit more about what your initial reaction was and uh, how you sort of articulated it online. Yeah, I wasn't surprised because I looked at the situation zooming out. And if you look at the situation thinking about who Justin Trudeau is, what the life is that he's lived, what the identities are that he embodies, the reality is that he could be a 29-year-old teacher who is living, you know, as a white man who's uh, heterosexual, who's able-bodied, who was the son of a prime minister, you know, from a high-income background, and may not actually understand the history of blackface, the pain that goes along with that, and what it means to actually engage in this type of a behavior. It's interesting because part of the debate now, too, over this photo is we heard Justin Trudeau in his apology shortly after uh, the picture was surfaced on that time uh, report, but he himself had called it a racist photo. Um, is the Prime Minister a racist for doing that? Is that even the issue? Yeah, so part of my thread was about the fact that we focus so much on labeling whether or not someone is racist or not racist. It's become almost this uh, label that nobody wants to embody, and it's become extremely toxic to even talk about whether or not someone is racist, which often means that we don't talk about the real issues. We don't talk about the fact that Canada was built on the colonization of Indigenous peoples' lands, that we've had policies you know, from the beginning that have sought to exclude certain people, immigration policies um, that you know prevented South Asian and East Asian Asian people from migrating, the Chinese head tax, Japanese internment camps. You know, there's a huge history of the way that Canada has specifically treated its racialized people. And if we don't talk about that history, I feel we're really missing the point. And that was exactly part of your thread, that in the coverage of this issue, Canadians appear to be missing the point as perhaps a teachable moment in this, too, was part of what uh, you were saying online and part of what resonated so much with others who shared that, of course. So, you know, I'm opening up my myself and the media to criticism here. Where do you think uh, we can change the conversation? How can we help the conversation be directed into what you think is the point? I think it helps to really take a hard look at how we've come to this point and how we could have created a situation in which Trudeau could have engaged in the behavior he did and thought that it was okay in 2001. I don't think there's a defense for that and I think there's a clear explanation when you actually look at the policies that exist. Right? We have a country in which we have disproportionate numbers of black and indigenous people in our prisons and in our child apprehension system and we have uh, you know, newcomers that can't get jobs uh, because of their accent or because of their name. We've got lawyers and doctors driving our taxis in this country. So I think if the media can look at those issues and really dig down and maybe hold our leaders accountable to say, what are you actually doing to address these structural issues as opposed to focusing on whether or not we think somebody is individually racist, then I think we would really be getting somewhere. Now, of course, this is an issue, too, that we've seen come up south of the border also when it comes to, as you say, labeling a leader, whether they are racist or not, defining them as a good or a bad person, uh, if you break it down even further. So when we're talking about this specific issue, we've heard criticism certainly from the, uh, you know, opposing parties that given this photo that has emerged, Justin Trudeau is not fit to lead. Would you say that with somebody having something like this in their past, having those sort of views, uh, that is sort of a view of ignorance to sensitivities of racial issues. Do you think that that is a fair criticism, that they may not be equipped to lead such a diverse country? I think it certainly points out the hypocrisy of some of the Liberal Party's uh, messaging and their, their stated brand. Um, I think that's partly what's really taken people aback so much, as Trudeau particularly has kind of marketed himself as this, you know, feminist, this younger prime minister than in the past who kind of gets social issues. And so I think this really points out the hypocrisy of that. And so, again, for me, it's really about action, right? So how is Trudeau saying that he better understands how structural racism works? and he would address those issues. And similarly, for those who are saying, well, if it's not Trudeau, then we vote Scheer, how is Scheer saying he's going to address um, just structural racism? Um, how is Jagmeet saying he's going to, you know, Jagmeet Singh saying he's going to address structural racism? That should be the question. And you've had so many conversations since this has come out, especially because of uh, what you wrote online. So I want to ask you, do you think this will 
shift the election, move the dial on the election? I think it's very possible. If nothing else, I think it will change what people are asking about. Um, I think they will want to see some real action. They will want to see, you know, a shift in kind of representation in this country. 20% of people in Canada are racialized, and yet we don't see that reflected in our boardrooms or in our government or in our leadership of our healthcare system or our education system or in the media. Um, so I think Canadians are going to start asking a bit more about that issue. And I think this is also an opportunity for people that have certain privilege in society to take a moment to reflect on that and think about how they can join with people who are affected by certain issues to really work towards a better society. Well, I appreciate you taking time out to broaden this conversation with us here today. Thank you, Ritika. Thanks for having me.